What's up, futurists? We've got a great show for you here today. We are covering the screens hacking your kids' brains. We're talking about robots. We're talking about alien oceans incoming on Jupiter's Europa moon, AI shaking up law and order. But we begin tonight with the big story, with Sam Altman predicting that we are past the event horizon for super intelligence. In a new blog post, OpenAI CEO says that we've already crossed the event horizon into super intelligence. The singularity isn't coming, he writes. It's already here and it's unfolding one update at a time. Altman calls it a gradual merge between human and machine. But what is gentle singularity? No, this is not a robot apocalypse, just exponential creep. The AI will get smarter, we will barely notice, but then, we will come to expect it. In one portion of his predictive blog post, he writes that, quote, wonders become routine. He's got some big predictions. I want to dive into some of them right now. In, he, in this, he writes that robots are not yet walking the streets, nor are most of us talking to AI all day. People still die of disease, and we still can't easily go to space, and there is a lot about the universe we don't understand. And yet, we have recently built systems that are smarter than people in many ways, and are able to significantly amplify the output of people using them. The least likely part of the work is behind us. The scientific insights that got us into systems like GPT-4 were hard won, but they, but they will take us very very far he writes in one he goes on to write one prediction that robots will build robots altman predicts that humanoid robots will be doing real world tasks by 2027 and that soon they'll be building entire supply chains so factories chip fabs and data centers to make even more robots that's how acceleration he predicts is going to kick in so while we need to put a lot of human capital into building robots now eventually the robots will build their own robots. I've got much more on robots later on this episode, so keep watching. Prediction two, Robo jobs will disappear and fast, but while jobs classes will vanish, Altman predicts, the capabilities will spike. The upside, he argues, is that there will be a richer world with room to rethink work policy and everything, everything that we thought was fixed. In, he, he writes, quote, in the most important ways, the 2030s may not be wildly different. People will still love their families, express their creativity, play games, and swim in lakes. But in still very important ways, the 2030s are likely to be wildly different from any time that has come before. We do not know how far beyond human-level intelligence we can go, but we are about to find out. In the 2030s, intelligence and energy, ideas and the ability to make ideas happen, are going to become wildly abundant. These two have been the fundamental limiters on human progress for a long time. With abundant intelligence and energy and good governance, we can theoretically have anything else. He finally predicts that space is in fact next. He says that after solving high energy physics, that we will be able to move straight into space colonization. Sam Altman writes that once intelligence floods the world, the bottleneck isn't talent, it's imagination. Artificial uh, general intelligence for everyone. He says the goal is to make it cheap, accessible, and decentralized. Hello, future. It's me, Kev, and this is a dispatch from the Digital Frontier with the latest on markets, tech, and freedom. The day is 162. The planet has complete 44.4% of its annual orbit around the sun star. I'm still broadcasting from planet Earth. Back to the future. They just made skin for robots. Robots are growing skin to feel. What's next? These scientists just gave the robots a wild upgrade. Stretchy, jello-like electronic skin that senses heat, pain, and even a light tap. Scientists created a hydrogel technology wired with 860,000 micro-sensing pathways that makes these bots feel almost human. Bots on the move, these touchy-feel robots are gearing up for warehouses, hospitals, and homes, but they're not flawless. They trip, they fall, and they might fumble your frying pan. So regulators are scrambling to set safety rules before your robo buddy causes a kitchen catastrophe. Legal Watch AI is making up laws in a major UK court case. Nearly half the legal examples given by lawyers were totally fake. It turns out they used AI to help and it made up imaginary court cases. The judge called it a big threat to the justice system. So this courtroom chaos, AI tools like ChatGPT are being used to, used to write legal arguments, but sometimes they hallucinate and invent fake facts. One lawyer couldn't explain why five different cases didn't exist. Another blamed Google, but the judge was not impressed. This is the future of law we're talking about. AI is fast, but the rules for using it are still way, way behind. Experts warn that fake facts in court could lead to fines, criminal charges, and even jail. But if we can't trust 
the legal system to get it right. What does this have to say about the rest of society? In another legal case, AI giving voice to the dead. In what may be a legal first, an Arizona family used artificial intelligence to create a video of a murder victim delivering his own impact statement at a sentencing. This digital testimony of Christopher Pelkey, who was killed in 2021 road rage shooting and at his trial, his sister used AI to recreate what he might have said to his killer based on memories and voice data. Now, this is a legal gray zone, but the judge did allow it. And the defense filed an appeal, but experts say this could open a new chapter in how victims are remembered and how justice is delivered. Here's what's happening in our neck of the galaxy. Alien ocean incoming. NASA just field tested a robotic lander on an Alaskan glacier. No solar panels, no backup, just AI drills in one mission. Crack open the ice on Jupiter's moon Europa and test it in Alaska. So the subsurface ocean and hunt for alien life. Something's melting in Terra Regio. If you've never heard that, I'm going to tell you about it. It's a part of the moon on Europa. The James Webb Telescope picked up heat signatures in Europa's chaos terrain rain in the Terra Regio, where the surface ice is crystallizing fast, even under cosmic radiation. And what do I mean by that? War warm pockets, movement beneath the crust, and maybe salt water leaking from an underground ocean 20 miles below. So the Webb Telescope's spectral data is now backed by lab tests from the Southwest Research Institute. This moon's ice is active, and it's really weird, and scientists are confused. So the robot's drilling in Alaska with no safety net. NASA's prototype lander just survived a brutal trial in Alaska, and it's fully autonomous, battery-powered, and designed to scoop samples from icy alien landscapes. But the real test comes in the 2030s, when the Europa Clipper orbits above Europa, and the lander follows with one job. Drill down and answer the biggest question in science. Are we alone? Are there microbes? on Europa orbiting Jupiter, beyond Mars. So why should you care about Jupiter's moon matter? Well, if Earth ever goes cold and Mars turns out to be a bust, likely we're going to go to Jupiter's moons. Europa and Ganymede are locked in Jupiter's gravity well, but they may harbor massive oceans protected by thick ice, which shields colonists from radiation. The bottom line, um, there's Saturn's moons, which is another contender, and you've also got Jupiter's moons, but these moons may have liquid water, complex chemistry, and geothermal energy, three essentials for life. So they're cold, yes, but bundle up because colder means preserved. It also means survivable. And if Mars is humanity's backup drive, Jupiter's moons might be the deep archive, and we just built the robot to go drilling. One more thing, screens are hacking your kid's brain. There's a massive new study that says screen time doesn't just mess with kids' emotions, it rewires them. Anxiety, aggression, and low self-worth go up, and the worse they feel, the more they scroll, the logarithm wins. The feedback loop of doom. Researchers tracked 292,000 kids under 10 and found a vicious cycle. Screens making emotions worse, bad emotions driving up more screen use, gaming was the most dangerous, girls spiral into anxiety, boys disappear into games, childhood is becoming a UX problem. Future kids, future problems. This is the closest we come to proof that screens are reshaping emotional development. One expert called it as close to Casual evidence as we can get. Not just limits, intervention. Parental controls aren't enough. Okay, kids need emotional check ins, digital firewalls, and maybe some old school boredom because once they're inside the loop, they don't come out the same. That's according to the American Psychological Association. That does it for me. I'm Kevin Sturley, founder of Meet the Future. Have a great tomorrow today.